Hey guys, Language Hacker here, and uh, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a tutorial for Mercenaries. Basically give you a rundown of what you need to know going into the new game mode. So let's hop right into Mercenaries. Build and level up a team of Mercenaries as you battle for bounties and glory. You got it, Flira. Let's go. <clears throat> now, there is an in-game tutorial, um, which you can also do by yourself, going through the game yourself. Um, but I wanted to go through it and kind of talk uh, over it and kind of give you what I've kind of learned um, playing through the tutorial myself. So let's start off. Each um, thing we'll be doing kind of has a map like this where you follow the sort of path, as I'm sure you may have seen from some other stuff online. Um, but yeah, we start at the bottom here and then we'll work our way up to the top to the final boss. Blaming the rogue, classic. Okay, so this is what the board looks like. You have your mercenaries here, short form is Merc, and your opponent's minions up here. Uh, these are some small rats, but over the course of the game you'll find um, small minions, bigger other mercs that you're fighting as well than bosses and whatnot. All right, so let's start off with this merc. As you can mouse over, you can see similar to the other Hearthstone um, game modes. There's an attack and health. Let's start off with this one. Attack is how, how much damage they deal. Health is how much damage they take. So let's start this. Now, each merc has access to some abilities. Starting off, um, you'll, only have, you'll only have access to one. And you'll notice that as you mouse over, just like in other um, Hearthstone modes, you'll have the little pop-up box for each of the keywords that explains what happens um, when that keyword is on a character or an ability. Um, Deathblow is something that we haven't seen yet in the other Hearthstone formats. Now, Deathblow is, it does something when it kills a character. So if this character gets a finishing blow with this attack, it will then again gain 10 health back. It'll restore 10 health. Okay. And attacking an enemy is um, the same as attacking in Hearthstone, uh, in, in Hearthstone's normal mode. Uh, when you're trading minions, um, in this case a mercenary, your attack damage is dealt to their health and vice versa. When you do that attack, their attack also is applied to your, uh, is removed from your health. So let's start off by attacking this rat on the left. Um, now we've input an action for Carol. Now let's put an input an action for Tyrand as well. Only one ability, deal four damage to an enemy. Cool. Let's do the same rat. Once you've selected everything, an ability for each of your characters, you'll get a ready button. Mercs use the prepared abilities automatically in combat. Destroy all the enemies to win. So there's a couple of phases, right? There's the phase where you pick all the abilities, then the combat plays out, including the opponent's abilities, and then we go back to the command section where we re-pick abilities. Attack abilities do physical combat with the enemy, which means that both you and they um, take damage once you connect. Um, other abilities can be used safely from range i.e. spells or ranged abilities. And specifically, if it says attack, that means attack and health will be traded. But if it does not specify attack, for example, arcane shot, um, that means that once this ability is used, this character is not actually taking damage with that ability. So let's do it again. Important to note that you don't have to choose the, an order from left to right. So for example, I could start off by choosing this ability first and then choosing Carol's ability doesn't really matter just yet, but as we learn more, it could come into play. Okay. There we go. Death blow goes off. Restore 10. Combat over. There's the first lesson. At the end of each combat, um, each uh, mercenary involved in combat, and not even just the ones in play, but even the ones on the bench, will gain experience for the combat. As you can see, Cariel and Tehran both leveled, and uh, it's highlighted here. Cariel, upon leveling, gained some extra health, which will be permanent for this mercenary going forward. And Taronda as well gained one attack and some permanent health. Taronda also got a new ability, Arcane Salvo, which looks like an AoE effect, which means it hits multiple minions, deal two damage to two random enemies. Now you'll see that mercs, um, I'll bring this up later as well, but mercenaries have a specific um, type or a class or whatever race, I guess you should call it. Taronda is a night elf. Um, and some abilities have specific uh, school spells like we've seen introduced in Hearthstone. All right, let's go on to the next one. Not bad, Sticky finger. But stay focused. You've got company. You got it. All right, what are we going to learn here? Let's find out. Oh, 
Okay, we got the same two mercs. And now we have two opponents here. Combat resolves based on speed order. Lower speed abilities go first, speed ties are random. Now you'll see here on the ability for each merc, they'll be now, they will be uh, this wing icon and a, and a number next to it, as you can see, it's highlighted. That means that there's a speed of six associated with this ability. Toronto also has on her abilities the same thing. This is a speed of seven, this is a speed of five, with the lower speed uh, being the one that resolves first in the fight. So after you pick all the abilities, the fight order will pan back and forth based on the lowest number for this. And as presented in the tutorial, if there are two abilities that have the same number, it will be decided by a coin flip. So let's do Crusader's Blow. Um, let's do, so that does three, this will do two to random. So let's do two AOE. Pew pew. Death blow triggers as well. Okay, some opponents can summon new minions, which means that they might be priority targets to kill going forward. And hence exactly why I'm going to start killing it. After you've selected your abilities, you can see that uh, this little text box kind of thing pops up that tells you what order the abilities will resolve in. So right now, um, to my understanding, Carol will get to attack first, and then Toronto will get to attack second. Bump. Bump. Now, we haven't killed off the sticky finger, but hopefully next turn we will be able to. Their attacks resolve after that. And now we just have one thing left. There we go. Death blow goes off. Fairly straightforward. These encounters are going to be a bit easier as you sort of learn through the uh, learn the mechanics, um, and the tutorial is the same for everyone. So you'll be going through the same encounters, um, which you might find more useful in game. But I thought I'd talk through it myself just in case that's something you guys were interested in. Well done. I have recruited a third mercenary for your party. Okay. New mercenary is Irella. Okay. Cool. Now you'll see that there is something special about this fight that is slightly different than earlier. There's a little thingy that pops up here over the encounter. And you'll see there's a different one here as well. Um, I think it might explain that in this next fight. But what that means is that this encounter will have more blue mercenaries, uh, which are known as casters. And lo and behold, there is a blue mercenary here. Mercenaries can do two times damage to each other. Um, red mercenaries or protectors deal double damage when they damage fighters, which are green mercenaries. Green mercenaries, fighters, will deal double damage when they do any damage to casters, which are blue uh, mercenaries. And thusly, uh, blue mercenaries will deal double damage to red mercenaries once they do damage. And you'll see that this little icon pops up when for example, Carol Red deals two, da two times damage to green. So if I want to select the attack, I probably want to do that because instead of doing three, she'll do six damage. Likewise, Toronto will do double damage to a blue. Green deals double damage to blue. And finally, blue will deal da double damage to red, but there's no red minions here. So we will just, where's that going for? It deals eight, six. Uh, let's do this. Same thing. Zyrell will go first. And you get to see the abilities play out. Okay. One down, one to go. Only one target there. Deals two times damage. And only one option there. Let's go. Same thing. Zyrell first. Carol second. Toronto to third. Um, different abilities all different speeds. So you can try to change the way the combat plays out by choosing abilities in specific orders, which may have benefits, as you might see later on in the tutorial. All right, let's pop right through. Almost done. Two encounters left. Swift and efficient. I like it. I like it too. You, another mercenary wants to join your crew. Wow, just like that. Grama shell scream. Okay, so that's a red. It's a protector. See that gem above your target's head? Pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. It means you can expect more fighters in this battle. Exactly. All right, Captain Greenskin. Let's go. Disgusting null politics. Did they add new uh, loading bars? That's awesome. Okay. 
Only three mercenaries can be in combat at once. Remaining mercenaries will wait on the bench as reserves. And the bench is here on the right. So you'll have a party with more than three mercenaries and you get to choose which ones you kind of want to start off with. Um, you can only put three in a battle at once. I'm, in, I'm, I'm interested in having carry her because she does double damage to both of these. So let's do that. And by the same vein, I want Gromish in as well. Uh, the game's telling me to throw in Toronto. Okay, let's do that. All right, command stage. This will deal six. This will deal the remaining damage, and then you can just shoot to green skin after we get rid of that. Okay, never mind. All right, we did get to clean up the cannon here, but we did lose Toronto for that. All right. Replace defeated mercenaries with ones from your bench. Defeated mercenaries will not be able to fight for the rest of the map. Um, so the map is the, the list of encounters that we saw earlier uh, as we were progressing through. So if a unit dies, you can't use them again for the remainder of the map, but then you will still have them once the map is over and you want to start a different map. Um, and if a unit dies, you'll be offered units from your bench and you get to choose a replacement and place it as you see fit. I must know more. We only have one left, so we'll take the Zarela. Back to command. One option, one option. Oh, we can talk about this, actually. I didn't mention this. Blood Fervor attack an enemy, death blow again plus 5 attack. So it's a slow attack, but it's it adds attack if you manage to kill it, whereas this death blow uh, restores health. Okay. Something worth noting as well. Um, you'll see that when a unit already has an ability selected, if you want to go back and look at it, you'll see a check mark to say, yes, this is already selected. And if you change your mind and say, you know what, maybe I actually don't want to use this ability or I don't want to target that, you can unselect it. Select it again, and then if there was a different target, we could choose a different target here. Um, just so you guys are aware. All right, combat, let's go. Cool. Cool. Nice. I believe there's one encounter left. Just for this map. Important to note, everyone gains experience, even mercenaries that have died in the, uh, in the combat. Even ones that didn't participate would also gain experience. All right, new build of Karyal. Taunt. Restore four health to this Merc and gain Taunt for one turn. Taunt um, works the same way as in the other Hearthstone game modes. So a minion with Taunt must be attacked first. Um, ranged spells and abilities can bypass Taunt, however. So if you have, um, let's say, a Hunter or an Archer or something, or um, a Mage uh, with abilities like that, you can um, ignore the Taunt with their abilities. However, fighters that specifically need to attack have to connect with the Taunt. And if you select a target that's not the taunt, it will automatically divert to the taunt. Um, also worth noting, if you uh, want to target something and it dies during the fight before you get to use your ability on that, the ability will be randomly redirected. So it's not like you lose your ability for that round. All right, Captain Hogger, let's go. What do you got? Looks like green jam, so I'm, expect I'm expecting um, green units. Focusing the healer. Okay, two green units here. I only have three mar mercs because um, Taronda died on the previous encounter. Null, null. Oh, it's a pirate, but that's a null. Oh, it doesn't even have a type. Okay. Okay. Human orc trinite. Let's go. Um, if you mouse over your opponent, you can also see what they're going to do for the turn. Captain Hogger is going to do attack an enemy, speed of seven, river paw null, toss weapon, give all your attack to another character this turn. So I'm assuming that means that this will happen with four speed, which would pass the attack on to Hogger, and then Hogger wants to attack. Okay. Zyrella's ability is good against that. Deal two damage to an enemy and give it minus two attack this turn. With a speed of three, it will apply before the river pawn paw null gets to toss the weapon. So we want to make sure that happens. Um, if we're attacking a unit anyways, this happens after Zyrella's thing. So we can attack after that attack is reduced to zero. And same thing here. So let's do that. That goes off. The weapon's tossed, but <laughs> question mark. Deal double damage. Deal double damage. All right. We could probably run that back. Hogger smash, deal four damage. 
Uh, it looks like this is spawning a null, perhaps. Okay. So I could taunt and protect my other units, but I don't think they're going to die to anything. And I don't actually heal, so let's just do some damage. And we'll reduce... Let's reduce... Ah, let's reduce Hawkeye this turn. Oh, I should not have reduced Hogger's attack, because Hogger's not actually attacking. Hogger was using uh, another ability. Okay. Uh, I'm okay still attacking here. Okay, attacking there. And we can do that with Cyrilla. Cyrilla goes down. Okay. You can see how Grom, uh, Grom's ability, um, Grom's death blow ability, makes it more useful as the fight goes on, because the attack goes up. Uh, do you want to taunt up here? Sure, let's taunt up here. Grom should be able to finish it off. Oh, Grom will die, but he'll get it off. Alright, as long as one mark's standing, we do win the fight. Boss done. First day on the job. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. Level up. Experience. Got some health. So I really got a new ability. Restore five health. Right, so there's healing and stuff that you can do as well with some characters. It's not all about um, specifically fighting and doing damage. There's some support abilities, there's some healing. There's some cool synergies you can find later on. Uh, and just in this video, I'll be going over the basics so you have an understanding of how the game works. And then in future videos, we'll talk about um, different cool things you can do. Now, you'll see that we're getting coins and that these coins have specific mercs associated with them. Um, these coins can be used to upgrade mercs abilities. So. To upgrade Carol's abilities, you need Carol coins, and so far and so forth. Give a nice little summary of what happened this map. Cool. Win to bounty stream. All right. What do we have to work with? But with a little effort, this place will become the heart of your operation. Okay. You have enough materials to construct a new building. Do it now. You got it. So the way this sets up, this is sort of your. Um, home away from home or whatever, I don't know what to call it. But this is where you'll be doing everything. You'll be you'll be able to see your collection here. You'll be able to go out on adventures and do the PVE content. And you'll be able to do PVP content here as well. But let's look at the workshop. The workshop kind of runs you through how each of these things works. Let's start with the tavern. Let's visit the tavern. All right, similar to the collection. Okay, I actually have to click this. You have, um, instead of cards, I mean, these are technically cards as well, but you have the mercenaries you available. Mercenary and on each mercenary, you can mercenary upgrade abilities, cards. and if you can upgrade Try it, it you'll see it by this big up arrow, kind of what you would see in Battlegrounds as well. All right, let's upgrade Arcane Salvo. Deal four damage to two enemies, ship it. Wait, maybe we do this instead. Sure. Excellent. So now, permanently, Toronto's Arcane Shot will now deal 8 damage to an enemy instead of 4. Cool. Um, they're separated by what kind of uh, mercenary they are. Protectors, Fighters, and Casters. And when you want to build a party, you just click on New Party, and you can drag and drop everything you want in there. Right now I only have 4, so a party will consist of 4. G usually your party will consist of 6. Um... You'll see that if you click on crafting, there are other options available here. Um, you'll see that a lot of these are not even grayed out, but like redded out or something. Um, to actually craft in this game mode, it's a little bit different than crafting cards in um, standard Hearthstone. What you need is to have coins to craft them. So the same coins that you can use to upgrade them, you would initially need to actually be able to craft them. And various um, mercenaries here, I think, have different... Uh, costs and some of them you'll get just by playing through the tutorial and playing the game more so go through a bit play a bit more and then you'll be able to see what uh, mercenaries you unlock and then what you'll need to craft or open in packs as you can see there's no shortage of work around here you should build a task board to track what needs to get done and avoid any future surprises you got it give me campfire visiting mercenaries need your help with tasks this is kind of like your daily quests Every day, a couple new um, tasks will pop up here. Very good. Other mercenaries will ask for assistance with their own tasks. Of course. Take a look. My patience grows thin. 
All right, so Grom wants me to travel to the Barrens, complete the first Cobra bounty. Bounties are just like a map, basically, like going through and, and completing one of those maps that we just did in the tutorial. Um, as a reward, I'll get a mercenary, Rokara, and a pack. Um, and this is generally what the daily quest will look like. Who's offering it, what's required, and what you'll get out of it. Usually it's coins, sometimes it's mercenaries. You can get equipment as well from what I've seen. So make sure to check you'll back here um, in between mission. bounties. Where's that mage? Okay. Travel points, so this is where we'll actually set off and do those bounties or those maps. I have brought you the ultimate transportation solution. An organic quadrupedal velocity device. It's a horse. I asked for a portal. Classic Fish. millhouse. Portals require time. Not to mention costly reagents. Talent. It's settled. Get and take Manastorm with you. Perhaps a little ride on his pony will refresh his knowledge of the arcane. All right, give me Mana Storm. We get Millhouse now. All right, so here, similar to the Soul Adventures, that's what it looks like. Um, we can start off, there's a few different zones that we're offered right now. Right now it's just the Barrens, because that's what we're starting off with the tutorial. Uh, Heroic Mode will be unlocked later, but it's basically normal encounters, but juiced up a little bit, and it's a little bit harder. For us, we just want to go do the normal. Ferocious Quillboard, there's a first bounty. Um, sure. Start off. Actually, you know what? Let's go back. I just realized we got Millhouse, so we can add Millhouse to our party as well. And that's important to note. Get in here, Millhouse. Okay, cool. Let's hop through the first one here, and then we'll call that um, probably a wrap for the tutorial. I'll talk a bit more about other stuff you'll be... Uh, keeping an eye out for as you progress through. So, cool. All right, let's talk about the maps. Now, as mentioned earlier, the gem on, on the top here will tell you what you can expect to see in the encounter. Um, but as you plan out, you'll see that there's different paths going along here. Right now, there's nothing special on this map, but in future maps, you'll see um, maybe some different icons than just this sort of lock thing. You'll be able to find um, mercenaries that want to give you more quests. You'll be able to find um, unique things that pop up that change uh, the rest of the map and you'll be offered treasures as well that change how um, your characters progress through the map. Sometimes it's a new ability, sometimes it's a, a passive bonus, something like that. So let's go through together. Race Marine Battle Guard is up first. New tasks are refreshed each day. You might even find them during your bounty adventure and that's exactly what I was talking about. They can pop up. I would recommend when you go through and start these bounties, mouse over what each opponent's uh, each each like minion does because sometimes they give you some information. For example, this one says death rattle give all quillboard plus one plus one. Sometimes they don't have text, but sometimes they do. This also gives quillboard plus one plus one. Okay, gotcha. This is red. Uh, blue is good against red. Let's throw down some blue stuff. Red is good against green, so I don't think I want to throw Tyran down. Uh, let's get down Grom. And before I hit ready, if I want, I can reposition if I realize that maybe they have cleave or something. But for now, they don't. At least I hope so. Blood Fervor. Let's kill that off. Arcane Explosion. Actually, hold up. Kill two to all. So if I'm dealing two to all, that means both of these die, which means this guy doesn't need to attack there. He can attack there. And then you can attack there. All right, let's go. textbook but a boom but a bing now there's a few things that you kind of have to get used to but after a couple encounters you really start to pick it up and it becomes a bit more second nature but that's just like that for any new mode right or any new game kind of a bit of a learning curve and then they'll figure it out treasures only last for one bounty map treasures can be found after every combat encounter okay so this treasure only applies to Tyrond so I can add an ability or I can have a passive effect Let's add passive effect, plus one arcane damage. You can test each of the treasures as they pop up. I find some are a bit more useful than others, but it's kind of still learning um, which ones are actually good and, and not good. Uh, let's do this one. With blue, we can expect to see some casters here. And if you mouse over, it even says caster battle, fighter battle, uh, protector battle. So you can kind of expect what to do. Uh, now, in this case, I would also mention that we're at a branching paths. 
Um, on more complicated, longer maps, you'll want to look ahead and see, okay, do I want to go this way or that way? Do I want more caster fights uh, because I have a very um, fighter-heavy party? Like, if I have more green units. Do I want to start doing more blue stuff? And also, there's little special things on the map that can pop up, either spirit healer or other stuff. So you'll want to look ahead on the map. Right now, it doesn't matter because it's about the same. I'm going to keep that in mind going forward. Mergle, 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 Mergle. Okay, pretty small as well. Uh, what's good against blue? Green is good against blue? Blue is good against my red, so let's go blue. I don't want them to be good against what I have. And Millhouse AoE seems really good right now. Two damage AoE seems very powerful. She has passive arcane damage, similar to normal Hearthstone. There's like the asterisks that pop up that tells you when uh, a dam uh, a, a un an ability is boosted. Okay, I expect Millhouse to AoE them all down, so I just use the single target on the remaining cobor. There we go. Ding. New ability. Staggering Slam. Deal two damage to an enemy. Its next ability is two speed slower. Okay. So effects will pop up where you can actually impact how fast your opponent's abilities are next turn. Uh, Wand of Weakness. Deal five to an enemy. Give it minus two attack for this turn. After this match, cast an ability. Gain plus one arcane damage. Passive plus one. Passive plus one seems good when I have AoE. All right, my arcane explosion hits everything. Let's do that. Fighter or caster? Let's do another caster. The caster one seems pretty easy so far. I imagine as the map goes on, some of the units get harder as well. Let's find out. Yep, this is almost identical to the previous encounter. So let's do the same thing. Toronto down, Zyrella, and Milkhouse. Once again, because blue is good against red, I don't want to give them the double damage. Uh, Millhouse is AoEing them all down, so we can focus the single target on this Quillbore. Okay, I forgot to look at what they're casting, but I think the, the group is strong enough that it doesn't matter. But do remember to keep an eye out on what your opponents uh, are casting, because that might affect what you're doing. Maybe they're doing something that has an ability much faster than you, and you'll want to actually react and use a different ability that actually gets in first. Okay. <laughs> Crystal Blade, plus five attack, double all damage dealt to this merc. Okay. Give your orcs and demons plus zero, plus two health. So I guess this applies to every encounter on this map. Deal damage equal to this merc's attack to all enemies. And that's actually without having to attack. Interesting. Let's try this. This sounds fun. Ferocious Quill Boar. It's a fighter. Um, fighter means red is good against them. Protectors. But let's see what's on the board. Sometimes it's more than just the... Uh... Okay, we have a green and a blue. So red is good against green, but it's bad against blue. Green is good against blue, and it's not weak to green. So I think I can do that. I'm kind of scared this is going to kill Grom because I picked up a Crystal Blade, but let's try it anyways. And... You know what? Let's get Millhouse. There's two targets. Oh, you know what? This is a mistake. Millhouse is kind of weak to green. Ah, it's fine. We're learning. Alright, I want to attack the one that I'm good against. Times two damage. Same thing here. There's only one option there. Boom. Boom. Ow. All right, Cursor Blade, quite painful. We did a lot of damage. Okay, let's throw another one in there. Red good against green. It's okay if you lose uh, mercs throughout the fight. As long as you manage to complete the counter, they will still all gain experience. Awesome. But that one had a death rattle too, I guess, or something that dealt damage to my guys. Cool. Ding, ding, ding. New ability. Deal four damage. Gain plus one arcane damage. Okay, so this is kind of like a scaling ability. 
Now, when Millhouse gains arcane damage, it applies to the whole party. So if you have other casters that also do arcane um, damage after Millhouse casts that arcane bolt, the whole party there will have extra spell, uh, extra arcane damage. So that's an example of a synergy you can start using. If you find more casters uh, that have arcane spells and put them together, that's perfect. It doesn't even have to be caster, actually. Tron on our side of the board will scale as well because her um, her shots, I believe her arcane shot, um, is, is also arcane, which benefits from Millhouse's uh, um, arcane damage boost. Now, we've defeated the boss. We have this um, the chest open. And the chest gives you coins. Once again, coins you can use to either craft the mercenaries or uh, upgrade their abilities, which will give you permanent um, boost Whoa, to their power. You are powerful heroes. Did Gromer send you? I don't think we should keep him waiting. Okay. Let's go back to the board because Grom wanted us to finish the bounty. We did the bounty. Now we have a pack and a car. Awesome. Done, mercenary. And it seems our village has already attracted a traveling merchant. Alright, this just puts in the shop so you can actually um, open pack. Actually, no, that's so that's the shop where you can actually offer. purchase packs. And there's this little thing here where we can open our packs. So let's open our packs. Now, when you see the car like this, that means you actually got a mercenary from the pack. It's just yours. Now I have Varian. Uh, these are coins. Uh, I believe legendary uh, mercenaries require more coins than uh, epics or rares or whatever to craft. Um, so you'll need more of these before you can actually craft them, and that's where packs come in. Um, you can randomly get the coins that give you the mercenaries that you need. Uh, you can't use Kurtz's coins, for example, to craft Garrosh or to upgrade Garrosh, so they are unique. Um, but this is what the packs will kind of entail. So let's open the other one, see if you get any mercenaries as well. I'm not sure if you're guaranteed a Merc um, per pack, um, but I think, I don't think you are. But I think you also can't get duplicate mercenaries because it doesn't make sense because you only need one and you can only use one, I believe, per per party. So I think it's um, after you unlock them, eventually you might just start getting coins. You've made great progress. Okay. Keep checking the task board for new missions. You got it. Once you find something interesting, Gather your team and get to work. Okay. We'll speak again soon. You got it. Be quick about it. Ooh. Um, there's also alternate skins for each mercenary that you can unlock doing various things. For example, now on Cariel, uh, if I click on her here, I can use alternate portraits. So let's use this one because it looks kind of cooler. Nice. All right. Make sure to check this thing to see what else you can build. We got a mailbox where we can see updates from Blizzard and whatnot. Um, this is where the fighter pit will be later. After you do some more missions, you'll be able to unlock that, and that's where you can actually do PvP, where you can build a party of six and actually face other players. Um, so be sure to check that out. I'd recommend doing a few missions, getting stuff rolling, learning more about the game, and getting used to it before you hop into PvP. But honestly, PvP is probably a great way to learn as well. Be sure to check here, try to do these tasks if you can, because early on getting these coins is really useful to um, power up your mercenaries and get coins for other ones that you don't have. Um, that's more or less all you need to know. Those are the basics. Uh, hope you learned a lot. Check out some of the other videos that we're posting um, to give you more in-depth, I guess, stuff to think about. How to build PvP lineups, um, tips and tricks and whatnot. Hopefully this is useful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and have a good time playing mercenaries.